Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another Mind Craft discussion on this delightful day. Kind of overcast, still smoggy here in northern Vermont because of the forest fires, but a gift of a day nonetheless. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm actually, I just came downstairs again. I was down here uh, for the last talk because it's easier to breathe down here, to be honest with you. Um, a little cooler, but um, I don't know. It's, it's easier to breathe than with the, the smog upstairs. So here we are. So uh, he, I, what I would like to talk with you today, and it's uh, it's amazing because I was, I've been on a little bit of a Richard Carlson PhD jag. He's the author of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff books. There's a million of them. But he wrote this this topic. I, it's it, One of the chapters is, well, they're chapters like a page, page long, two pages maybe. Don't answer the phone. It's interesting because I'm such a huge fan of this. And he wrote these way before cell phones were even a thing. And I, back when, in the retro, back in the day, you know, when, raptors were running around and glaciers were shifting and we had landlines actually my husband and i still have them because we, we live so rurally that we don't we, for emergencies wise we don't we don't always get service we keep it but i'm talking about back in the day i i remember um being a teenager and the phone you know the phone would get so stretched out because you're trying to get as far away from your parents as you possibly can but you're strapped to the wall so usually you'd be on your back, your feet are up the wall, and you're like, bye, 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 high school, bye, 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 middle school, whatever. And then like your little sister walks by and like this kind of kind of kills the whole <laughs> the whole mood of the conversation. Or your parents walk by and you like stop dead in your tracks with whatever it is you're saying. Um, but this is just to give you a little feel. So I remember when um we were eating dinner, and uh this is something positive actually but uh, uh because truthfully there aren't a lot of things but this is a positive thing i took from my parents growing up and that was that when we had dinner uh my mother would this is funny so if you're listening to this and you have no idea about retro phones it's gonna make no sense to you but the rotary phone is like the little holes right one through nine and then the zero and so in order to make it not ring you had to you had to put take your finger move the whole thing around and then put a pencil in it so that it didn't and that's how you and then whoever called would get a busy signal. That's so probably hard to relate to for most of you, unless you're in my age range. And then often she'd forget and like two hours would go by after dinner. And so that, I think it was a positive thing because we ate dinner, we ate dinner together and there are no interruptions. And obviously technology didn't exist then, uh, but the, the landline did and it would ring, ring, ring. So it didn't ring at all. And then, but again, sometimes she'd forget for two or three hours and my friends in high school were calling and I'm like, oh my God, I see the pencil. The pencil would be stuck in the rotary phone. And I, I thought my, my teenage life had come to an end because I missed out on all whatever was going on in, you know, ninth grade or whatever. But um, anyway, we can, we can airlift this into, you know, now, because now, even though that landline example is probably very humorous to a lot of you, it's actually so much worse, as you know now, because that doing that it, that interruption could only happen not only just in the house, but in one, we had one phone and it was in the kitchen and it was, you know, the cord was strapped to the wall. Like I mentioned, with got very stretched after a while with the teens. Um, that was it for distraction possibilities. So now we've got, you know, 24 seven, as far as opportunity to be ripped out of the present moment, to have your dinner interrupted, to be in a conversation with a friend, your child, your little child, your young adult child, your parent, your sibling, you know, um, it just being with yourself and having quiet time. And then there, there it goes, ding, ding, buzz, zip, you know, you got the ringtones. And to just silence that crap, I mean, silence it. Our life minutes are so valuable. And, uh, you know, just just to take, block out some time and just don't answer it. Just, especially, again, back then it was in the house. You couldn't feel the vibration of it. It shouldn't be on your body anyway because the radiation is very, very bad for you. Google that. We probably, we aren't going to know what's going on with that for a while yet, I bet you, but it's not going to be good. I, I see, sometimes I see, see teenagers and preteens, you know, having that stuff stuck in their bra and that's, oh my God, it's so bad. But anyway, that was a sidetrack. So these notifications going on constantly. So the best thing to do is at least take a breather from it. Remember, life is not an emergency the high majority of the time not even in urgency the high majority majority of the time. 
So while you're at lunch with a friend or lunch with yourself or, you know, reading or something, maybe take it off your body, turn down, you know, shut it completely off. So there's no ring, there's no buzz, there's no vibration. Just don't answer the phone. So it's interesting because Richard Carlson, PhD, starts it out like that. Like, have you ever been, and remember, this is old school. How often have you been completely overwhelmed by all that you're doing at home so we can relate to that regardless of this was two or three decades ago, two, I think, maybe 90s. I'm not sure. So two or three decades ago, and now we the feeling of overwhelm isn't different, right? Just the context, society is a little different, context is different. The, that tight feeling in the chest and a buzzing mind, that racy heart, none of that's different, okay? So Richard Carlson, PhD, says, how often have you been completely overwhelmed by all you're doing at home when... At the worst possible moment, the phone rings. Think of this with the cell phone. It only can happen way more. Because you can be on a walk and have the phone ring. That didn't used to be able to happen in the 70s and 80s, right? You're on a walk. You're on a walk. You're free. You're liberated. And he says, or you're trying desperately to get out the door. Oh, my God, that has happened so many times. You're trying desperately to get out the door by yourself or with your kids when ring, ring, ring. The phone calls out for your attention. I have to stop right there because I have such a, a peeve with that. I forgot till this minute because it doesn't happen that much anymore. It's just my husband and I here. But when when somebody, okay, let's say let's say it's a reverse. You're calling old fashioned landline or actually cell phone because you wouldn't know the difference. And okay, then the person you're calling maybe is a good friend or whatever. We're not saying they're an evil demon. Somebody nice. You're calling them and they answer the phone and tell you that they're about ready to walk out the door. Oh my god, when that happens, I'm like okay. If you're about ready to walk out the door, here's the big question. Why did you answer the phone? And then Richard says, or on the other hand, end of the spectrum, you're absorbed in a special moment by yourself or with someone you love when, again, the phone rings. So I can tell you this has not been different for me with the landline, without the landline, because that positive thing that I took from my parents with the phone off during dinner um, now that now our young adult kids talk about it, actually just like this week, yesterday, yesterday, I think it was yesterday before one of our daughters was talking, our daughter Shani was talking about, talking about that and different things that my husband and I did. And, and they, they like that we ate dinner. I mean, it's come back to us. They like that we prioritized, you know, the, how was your day? You have to, you know, you have to kind of teach them that when they're really little. Now ask your brother how his day was. And once they get, then it just becomes natural. And there was never, ever any TV on or any technology allowed at the table. And we had the landline, had the landline and never, ever answered it. No way. And because that time was sacred, you know, you know, it takes, it takes, you know, I also cooked six nights out of seven, which I just loved. I enjoyed it. Um, and, and, you know, you go through all that work and it's, and it's, and you all sit and it's this time at the end of the day before the kids started homework and. They came home from sports or tired from theater and this sports and this and that, whatever club. And it was time that was cut out of, you know, cut out of the day that we stepped out of the world in a sense with no, with nothing, nothing able to break through that bubble to have time as a family. And the kids to this day still talk about the value of that. Even if I got, like when they were teenagers, and I got a couple of eye rolls once in a while. But if I have to, I didn't get much of it, honestly, because they were kind of conditioned at that point. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter what it was. There's no such thing as an emergency. Or if there is, call 911. You know, just, there's nothing going to happen during this hour at dinner, at the most, might be even like 40, 45 minutes on, on some nights, right? There's nothing you can do about any of it. So, and actually, this is also something I say to my students, because... I have a no cell phone rule in the classroom. They can, they can bring them, but they go under their chairs and they are to be turned off. And I, I, that was a two-step process. I used to have them turn them off and then figured out that they can't leave them on their person because they would not turn them all the way off. They'd vibrate and then they'd try to check them. So now the rule is, and this has been working for years, the phones are completely 100% off and it's in the syllabus. Anybody tries to check text, their grades go down because that distracts you know the whole momentum of the classroom so so that's the whole point is carve out carve out the dinner time for absolutely positively sure and then there's all the other times um when you're out at lunch with somebody why is why is the phone on 
It's not a thing you can do. I even, like I said, with, with my students, I'll ask them. This class is only an hour and 15 minutes. Let's say, not to, not to sound cold and callous, let's say Aunt Tessie is having open heart surgery on this day. What can you do about it in the next hour and 15 minutes? They kind of look around. Answer is nothing. Zero. You can pray, send the good vibes, but she's safe where she is. You, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So this is about teaching for us with our kids, with teaching them to prioritize each other. Family first, family against the world, right? Family first. With the classroom situation, it was prioritizing each other as human beings and prioritizing their education, prioritizing what their classmates were saying in discussion because it's very, very important what they're saying to each other. And it's just so important to turn the dang phone off. Then uh, Richard Carlson also talks about, um, you know, again, this is a little bit ago, what he talks about in his own house, in his own home, one of the most stressful moments is when the phone rings and they're just going out the door in the morning when the kids run over, and when the kids runs over and answers it. So that could be stressful. He says, now, rather than getting in the car and back on the phone addressing someone else's concerns, and the time and the time and accompanying stress is rarely worth it. That's what we're talking about. So the other example was we call and the person says, oh, I have to go. Well, why the heck did you answer the phone then, right? So if it's us, maybe the partner does it, and we're just about to walk out the door. That now, your whole mindset went from going out the door to this barbecue you're looking forward to or to dinner with your partner that you're looking forward to, or a movie with the kids that you're looking forward to. And now all of a sudden, your all your life minutes, your focus, right, where your focus goes, the energy flows, is now all wrapped up in whoever's on the other end of the phone with their issue. And, and who needs that either? You know, and then lastly, I want to kind of talk about, because it's a, it was an issue back then. It seems like it's more of an issue now, and I do talk, it with, talk about it with my students. It's the message it sends. And I know that when I was, I was years ago, when I was bartending at a ski resort, um, and people were lovely. The majority of the people I worked with were lovely. There was this one manager who was just really arrogant, and he uh, would have his cell phone glued. To, now, granted, that job he needed to check it. Okay, fine. You could literally be in the middle of a sentence, and if that phone buzzed, he, he, he would just jump right on. You could be you could be in the middle of saying, my left leg was torn off this morning, and he would just not even know. And it was so rude. So I would often just wait and stand there silently until he, you know, figured out how rude he was being. And then, and yeah, and that. So, so there are more examples of this. Whenever we do that with someone, the we're out with, you know, having lunch, and we just check it. Usually the phone is upside down, which is not less rude. Simon Sinek does a whole thing on that. Turning it upside down when it's still on is not less rude. It's still rude. It's right there with you waiting to check it. And so when you check it, in the, when somebody is talking, you're at lunch with them, um, it, the message is, I'm just going to check and see if this person is more important than you are. Right now, that person in front of you should be the most important to you, right? So checking the phone. So back in the day, Loretta LaRoche, one of my favorite comedians, you to do this whole stand-up funny thing about call rude. So it was back in the day with the with the actual landline phones. And it used to beep. You'd be on the phone with one person. It would beep if somebody else was trying to break through. But back then, there was no caller ID, at least for a while. So you're taking a risk, a gamble, right? It's beeping. Oh, somebody's trying to reach me. Somebody's trying to reach me. And so when you would when you would say, oh, hey, can you hang on to the person you're on the phone with? Your friend, you're right in the middle of a conversation. She talked about this whole thing. That's why she called it call rude. I'm to hang on right there. I'm going to check and see who this is on the other line and see if they're more important than you are. I'll just, just hang on. I'll be right back. Well, that's not much different, if any different, than the whole cell phone thing. The flipped over phone, checking, checking, just turn it off. It's interesting. Um, some of my students are really catching on to that, and they have a game, and I forget that. It has a name. I forget what it is. But they were telling me about it. So it hasn't just been once, so it must be a thing because I've heard it a few times. When they go out for pizza or whatever on the weekend, they'll, if they do this thing, whatever it is that it's called, they'll put the cell phones all in a pile. Like they'll make like a little tower, like stack them all up. And the first one who goes to, to, goes to check their phone has to pay the bill. That's awesome, isn't it? That's so awesome. So I can't get going because I really think that um, we really kind of 
could use to get back to some of the basics, to be honest with you, because the most important thing when it comes down to this whole conversation we're having is respect for who's in front of us. Whether that's at the dinner table, whether that's in a conversation with a friend on the grass in the front lawn, whether you're even in, in the grocery store and the cashier's waiting for you while you're check, you know, not valuing her time or his time or their time while you're, you know, answering texts while she's standing there waiting for you. I mean, I've seen people do that so many times and they're making minimum wage or better, which makes it all worse. And it's just, you know, to put the human being in front of you, regardless of what this, that means, whatever that looks like, and, and, and prioritize them before that little mini computer. And that's, I guess, what I'm saying. Just be, I think it'd be a whole lot better world if we did that. And so the whole theme here was don't answer your phone as much as you can. All right, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the scorchy northern Vermont. Have a mindful, hopefully partially cell phone-free day. Thank you.